Hello everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching again. If you already saw my video about uh, Leonard Zipkin's Summer in Baden-Baden, that was my first video and I must say it did a lot better and it received a lot more responses and feedback than I thought it would. So thank you very much for that, first of all. Now I'm going to be talking to you about a book that I read recently called A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. Here it is. It's uh, published by FSG Classics for Strauss and Giroux. I think that's the way you pronounce it. I'm not totally sure, to be honest, but it's a good publisher. And um, I read this actually with my girlfriend. We both got the book and we decided to read it together one afternoon. Um, I had not read anything by Isherwood before. I had a copy of Berlin Stories, which I uh, had been meaning to read, and which I will read now that I've read A Single Man. More of that later. Um, so I, you know, had no experience reading Isherwood. I did not really know what to expect. I um, did know there was a movie out, which I also had not seen. So, I mean, I was really quite in the dark as to uh, Isherwood's style, subject. Etc. I just knew that he um, he was gay and he was a writer and he was um, born in England and he died in the United States. So he has an affiliation with both these countries. Um, about Isherwood, I mean, of course, I in the process I looked up more about his life. Um, he was born in 1904, and he died in 1986. Um, a single man. He wrote in 1962. It's probably his most famous work. Um, I don't think that um, the Berlin stories are probably uh, his next uh, most famous work. But even so, he doesn't seem to be uh, that well known as far as uh, writers go. I think, you know, considering his literary output, he wrote a, lo uh, a lot. Um, it seems like he should be better known, also based on the quality of the book that I read, which I'm going to talk about now. So A Single Man um, is about a grieving man called George, who lost his partner named Jim. And uh, uh, the novel starts in an interesting fashion. It was quite um, strange because it's very detached. So um, George is getting up in the morning, and uh, it's a very, uh, in, in sort of an impersonal way written, referring to um, the one, the person undergoing the action, you know, the getting up, looking in the mirror, in a very detached way. That, it, you know, it is doing this, that, and it, it takes a little while to, to get into to see what's going on. Um, but it's actually quite cool because it makes sense in the morning if you've had, let's say, a rough night, you went to bed too late, or just in general you're going through a rough patch, then um, sometimes you do <laughs> wake up in the morning and you are just wondering where the hell you are and, um, you know, everything takes a lot of effort and you don't really feel quite like a person, like a human being yet. So actually, I thought that was quite a, quite a nice touch, um, this, uh, this opening uh, well, couple of paragraphs. And, um, well, I mean, there's just a couple of points. It, it's, not a very long, uh, it's not a very long book, so uh, um, it's only about 186 pages. Um, I don't want to give too, uh, too much away, but the, I have a couple of, uh, of points I would like to discuss. So, um, of course, as I've already uh, uh, mentioned, Isherwood uh, was gay, and the main character, uh, he lost his partner, and uh, of course they were in a, in a homosexual relationship, which uh, it was written in the 60s, and it's it sort of set um, uh, a little bit before that, uh, when homosexuality was still very much sort of kept uh, from people at a personal level, it wasn't uh, uh, out in the open like it is. Well, you know, in the West, for instance, today, I think it's quite difficult to turn on the television and uh, uh, watch shows for an extended period of time without, you know, encountering some kind of uh, either a homosexual character or even, you know, uh, a gay show. So that definitely uh, uh, wasn't as as common back then. So um, for and and I mean as someone who is heterosexual, it's actually quite interesting to read from a perspective of someone who has, you know, experienced this having to, to hide um, part of themselves from the public. It is, it is interesting to read. Um, it's, it's, you know, uh, to put it in a somewhat cliche way, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's mind opening in a sense to, to, um, to experience um, how difficult it actually is for, for a person to have to, um, always keep this part, like, which is, 
you know, them, uh, who they're attracted to, always keep that part to themselves and, you know, have to be careful who they, you know, maybe tell them, uh, tell um, their uh, sexuality, sexual preference to. It's, um, it's, it's something you don't usually realize if you, um, you know, if you don't, uh, um, if you are heterosexual, you know, the, the, the fact that you have to consider, you know, are you going to tell people? And well, back then, of course, you, uh, you could not tell people as easily. And um, to sort of go through this, uh, this daily life of, uh, of George, where he goes, because he's a university professor, and he, uh, he has these, uh, these dialogues with people there, and in the back, he sort of says, you know, I want, it's kind of like, a, like an afterthought, like, I wonder if this person knows, you know, suspects anything about, um, you know, my, uh, the nature of my sexual orientation, and that, you, you know, it, it kind of puts you in a, in a, in a certain social, um, position, it, 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 the dynamic of your, your social inter interaction, um, it's quite different from from what you know someone who is um you know the who's uh whose sexual orientation is is what's considered normal um so that people don't even you know they assume that you're you're heterosexual and you assume that if you're a man you're attracted to women vice versa um so that i mean and and uh isherwood writes writes it really nicely so uh, that was uh, definitely an interesting perspective to um to be exposed to um as for uh okay so the the, the writing style of the uh of isherwood in, in this novel at least I, I haven't read anything else so i can't judge overall um it's uh i mean it's gorgeously written it's uh it's it's, it's very very pretty the the way it's written the language it's succinct it's uh to the point it's not overly um lavish but it is uh it is um yeah it, it is very well written and um there is a lot of subtext so if you if you're reading it's kind of i mean it's reminiscence in a, se uh, a sense uh, of of hemingway uh, where you get sort of you know the more declarative sentences and you get a very sort of almost insufficient statement that actually is more telling once you start thinking about what it's supposed to mean and you get that in quite a few uh, in quite a few places in uh in a single man and actually it works very well because of course you know given the nature of um of george's sexuality and um the fact that part of it is hidden you do rely to a certain extent on um things that aren't spoken out that aren't out in the open um so the, the it's like the the writing style in a sense matches the the study of the character and the, and the issues that are explored which is um which is always uh, which is always good. It always adds an element to to the writing if it's uh, if it's catered to this sort of uh, um, to to the issues at hand. Um, so that's that's one thing I, I particularly appreciated. Now about the the story itself, I don't want to give too much away. Again, um, just I would encourage you to read it yourself if you haven't read it yet. Um, one thing is that the story is essentially about love and loss and about what to do when you have lost love um not only that though because you know at any period of your life whether you're a teenager whether you're you know in the middle of your life let's say or near the end of it if you lose someone you love if you lose the love of your life it's probably you know it's one of the the absolute worst things that can happen to you and uh um you know no one handles it uh well or it's not easy for anyone and it completely break some people and some people manage to uh to live on afterwards and to to get their life back on track but one of the the interesting um themes that the that the novel um treats is is when you have lost um your loved one when you're at an advanced age right so when you're when you're young when you're going to university uh when you're just starting your your job and uh, you're in, you know, a setting where where, where lots of lots is happening, and uh, you're young. You can go to bars. You can, you know, you whatever. You have associations, friends. It all seems to be more buzzing when you're younger. When you're older and you're more settled in your ways, and um, especially if like George, you're <laughs> you keep to yourself, and uh, you're, I mean, not necessarily a, a recluse or a hermit, but you know, you like you like your privacy, which I think, you know, many people who love to read like me can relate to. Um, it is more difficult to 
once you have lost someone, uh, to meet someone else. Even, I mean, I'm sure no one who loses the one they love wants to meet someone at uh, someone else, at least not initially. I think the thought is always, you know, you, that was the one for me. I, I never want to, I never want to meet anyone else. Um, but, you know, from a more detached psychological point of view, of course, um, if you do lose someone at a certain point, you know, after the period of grieving, you do, in a sense, not necessarily have to go on, but you're at a point where uh, you need to decide for yourself, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to be sad for the rest of my life? Am I going to be, you know, miserable? Am I going to um, refuse to engage in any kind of uh, relationships after, uh, you know, after what happened? And um, of course, you might start to think like, what about the person who loved me? Uh, you know, what would they want me to do? And uh, you do often, I suppose, come to the conclusion that, you know, if, if a person truly loves you, they don't want you to to go on living uh, your life miserably. And uh, if you can be happy, then probably you should um, be happy. Um, so this happening at an at an advanced age when uh, when opportunities to meet new people um, are limited. That's actually quite um, quite a, a a different thing, I think, from uh, from when you're younger and you lose someone. Um, not that it's any uh, uh, any more intense, more heavy, more traumatic or damaging to lose someone, but it's just uh, you know aside from the fact also of course if you're um, if you're older then usually you have already been with the person much longer than when you're young. I mean when you're 16, 17, China, you know it's it's unlikely that you'll have been with a person for 20. I mean it's not unlikely, it's impossible, but you know um, you haven't been with the person that long and uh, when you're older of course you get more set in your ways and you build up a life together and when that, that sort of disappears it's not just the person who disappears but it's also to an extent your whole uh, way of life that is dramatically changed which is uh, of course a little bit less the case when you're when you're younger. Um, so, I mean, the, the way that Isha would explore is that uh, the grieving at an, at an old age. And also, you know, it's um, all of this is only uh, made more uh, difficult, more intricate by the fact that uh, George is uh, gay in a, in a time when uh, it's not easy to meet other people who are gay, you know, gay bars. I mean, there is one uh, that's supposed to be, you know, more uh, notorious or well known for uh, for um, gay people to go, to go there, but you know nowadays, especially again in the West, uh, there are um, actual like meeting up places, cafes or, or bars that are known, you know, to to be to be gay, and you can go there. But back then, it was uh, again much more limited uh, your opportunities of meeting, uh, you know, like minded like minded people, people who are attracted to the same people that you're attracted to. Um, so all of these issues sort of uh, uh, are touched by uh, by Isherwood, and um, yeah, this uh, um, I I read it in in, in one go in one uh, one very lovely afternoon, and uh, I was very much uh, very much impressed uh, by the way Isherwood wrote this, um, the beauty of the prose, the uh, psychological depth of the of the characters um the the emotional response that i was able to uh to get from uh from the story um it's um it's it's a very it's a very um well crafted novel as well it's short there's no super superfluous words in there really um the opening is uh, or i should rather say the ending runs at a nice parallel with the beginning because uh, as you might recall i uh said that the beginning it, it opens with george waking up um and it ends with him uh going to sleep and uh and well i mean i won't uh, i won't say more than that because i don't want to give it away but there's that uh there's sort of the cyclical uh um parallelism that runs uh, runs through the story um uh, which which i appreciate it's uh you know, there's there's always a kind of beauty in, in symmetry, and uh, and if you have a storyline that's um, that's that's well thought out, you know, that has these kind of uh, touches to it, uh, that's something I uh, I always uh, always admire, and um, I think that makes for usually that you know all things uh, all things being equal usually makes for a good story. Um, and um, well, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I uh, have to say. I mean, there's a movie. 
uh, single man, um, directed by Tom Ford. It's supposed to be very good. I am still going to uh, watch it with my girlfriend. <laughs> we have uh, we have that planned after reading the uh, the novel now. And uh, I mean, I'm d I'm definitely going to read the Berlin uh, stories, which I have a, a very uh, very beautiful uh, New Directions paperback edition of the Berlin story. So 2017, early on in the year, I'm sure I'm going to get to that. Uh, Isherwood has me, uh, you know, has me convinced that he's worth reading. And uh, I looked up um, more of his work, and there's so much that I just I've never heard of before, you know. Um, it's also published in these nice FSG Classics editions, and uh, I'm going to start collecting, uh, collecting them, and I am pretty sure I'll... Uh, um, I am at least intend to uh, make my way through all his uh, works eventually. So I would uh, recommend checking uh, checking out a single man if you haven't. Um, it's uh, it's an it's um it's a perspective. I think if you, let, let's say if you if you are gay, I think that it should be an especially meaningful book because I'm sure you'll be able to relate too much in it. And, you know, as always, if, if you know, you have a book that's, uh, that's written from a certain perspective, which you share from personal experience, it's always more meaningful. But definitely, if, you, if you're not, then still, there's so much that you can appreciate in there. Um, and um, just, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's well worth reading. So I'll uh, leave it on that. Thank you uh, again for your support. Also, my last video, it's really motivating me to uh, to make uh, these videos, to continue making them, and I'm sure that uh, I will uh, I will keep it up. And uh, with your uh, comments and support, I'll be able to do so. Thank you. Goodbye.